Hallo, ich ist die Kiki für Metal4. Wir sind hier auf dem Metal Female Voices Fest in Belgien. Und ich habe mit mir Melissa Verlag, ähm, ehemalig von äh, Visions of Atlantis und Ecoterra. Und jetzt erzählt sie uns über ihr neues Projekt. So tell us about your new project first. Well, um, my new project, which we're going to announce a band named Schnoon, <laughs> um, is, uh, is really cool. It's sort of death metal with female vocals. And it's sort of a different style that I'm playing around with with my voice. So um, it's a little heavier and grittier. And I, I love it. It's my favorite project so far. Yeah. Absolutely my favorite project. So <laughs> you're actually, but you're actually uh, an opera singer. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Classically trained. Yeah. So okay. yeah, two degrees in, in vocal performance and mm -hmm. classical singing. So yeah, in an opera background. But I'm, I'm trying it out. I'm trying to do a little different stuff here. So okay. yeah, it's a challenge for you, I guess. It is. It's it's like kind of taking on a new instrument mm -hmm. in a way. So um, but but yeah, but it's again, it's uh, it's something that I wanted to do and sort of not be a one trick pony, you know, and actually yeah. <laughs> Great. And you are also one of the founders of the community, in the Facebook community itself. Mm -hmm. Tell yes. us about that. Okay. Um, well, uh, two years ago, um, Lisa Middelhalva uh, contacted some girls that, that she knew from the scene. Um, uh, we had toured before with Visions of Atlantis together, and we had such an instant bond together mm -hmm. that was so unlike anything that either of us had ever experienced. And then, you know, throughout the years, we've, we've run across other women that, you know, sort of clicked right away. And um, so we decided, or she decided, that we were going to start this group. And we were going to support up and coming girls in the scene and kind of tell it really like it is and educate people about what it's like to be a woman in the scene and support one another. Because I think a lot of people feel that there's a lot of competition and catfighting. And that's not the case at all, in fact. It's just that. You know, we just don't ever have a time to really sit down and chat. Or we do backstage and that's nobody sees that part. Yeah. So yeah, it's great. We love it. We love it. Yeah. So um, that leads me to the next question and this is a question we are going to be asking every of the singers, of the female singers. So how is it like? Um, is there still a lot of sexism, a lot of, I don't know, um, disadvantage for women in this metal world? Well, yeah. I would say yes. Because there's a lot of things that happen in the background. I, I think you've seen a lot of women lately, especially, have been quitting their bands. You know, because it is very challenging sometimes to work with all men, and um, and just sort of a lot of the masochism that that happens there, and the, and the machismo of working with men sometimes gets in the way. And um, some women, um, not not really me, but others have expressed that they've been treated differently or um, just sort of. You know, treated like a little girl, just go and sing our songs. That's not really fair, you know, because a lot of these women. I mean, you, you hear it. They're strong artists. They have a passion. They've got a creative voice that I think that that sometimes gets overlooked by even their own band members. When it comes to labels, I mean, you look at a lot of the women. They're they're either on the cover or they're told to do certain things or or be a certain image. Yeah. And um, and is that sexism? Yeah, the way it is, because you're not asking the men to do that. You know? Yeah, sure. But do you think uh, it's also that? Um, uh, Self-promote, like uh, Self -promote. yeah. Sometimes, but sometimes also a lot of marketing. I mean, there yeah. might also be singers that want that. They yeah, really want all the attention. True. And all the, uh, yeah, and I think I think it, women should be able to have their own individual style. If they want to wear turtlenecks on stage or sweatpants, go ahead. You know what? When I'm close to it, I I like to wear girl dresses and and do the sort of more dolled up thing, you know, and I, and I think that that's really cool, and you know, but it's it's women that sometimes feel like they're forced to look a certain way, which does happen. Um, a and R reps will take an artist and they'll actually say, okay, you know, or they'll sign a band based on what the girl looks like. Uh, you know, that's mm, really so, yeah, yeah. And then there's the age thing too. I mean, it's it's harder to get signed. It's harder to sort of launch into the business when you're a little bit older as a woman. Not so much the case with men, but it is. But I think that uh, also comes from the music itself. True. In the in the classic, in the classical music, mm -hmm. I think there's also these uh, age limits and this. Not so much. Actually, with with classical technique, your voice actually gets better as it ages. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. it, when you're a young singer in your twenties, you know, you still have a lot more growing to do, and your voice has a lot more changing to do. Yeah. So um, I I personally notice in my own voice that over the 10 years that I've been doing this type of music, that my voice has deepened a lot, mm -hmm. and it's sort of grown, and I feel like I've learned a lot more about my own instrument yeah, sure. than I did before. So, yeah. No, I just meant, um, to start oh. studying an uh, opera career. Oh, you yeah, to start studying. 25 yeah. or um, 16, small, you know, 29, starting. I guess, of the, in the 
music universities here in, in Germany. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. In the United States, you can start any time. Okay. So, but you pay for your own college in the United States too. So. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. What would be a solution? What do you think would be a solution to About this? Uh, this all sexism thing and. You know, I, I would like to think that, you know, by us women banding together and sort of calling stuff out, I hopefully that will change things. I think just the music industry in general has changed a lot. Um, and it and it is allowing artists to take more creative control over their own product that and that hopefully women, you know, I, I think will be able to sort of not say, well, you know, I'll do whatever you tell me just because I want to be famous. It's I'll do it on my own terms. And so hopefully there's that. I hope girls will also find the strength within themselves to stand up to bullying, to stand up to you know any anything that that they would feel sort of depressed by. Mm -hmm. So um, you know I just I just hope the women just know this, you know, and grow into that and understand that they don't have to put up with that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another question we're going to be asking everybody. everybody. Okay. <laughs> would you apply to the next uh, Nightwish singer? <laughs> Well, of course, it's a great gig. <laughs> so I think I think if you asked every girl here, they probably already all sent their tapes in. So yeah, <laughs> we're gonna know. But it would be fun. Hey, okay, that's that's a fun crowd to play in front of. And the guys, they, you know, they've got great music. And I I really do like probably my the only album that I really really liked of theirs has been Imaginary. So yeah, they're on they're on the upright. They're on the upswing. So yeah. <laughs> I think that was all. Thank you so Great, much. Do you thank want to you. Say goodbye to our. Bye. Mwah. <laughs> Germany? Yeah. Ah, okay. Big Aids. Bye. Tschüss. <laughs>